Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be looking at this Nintendo Switch which has been sent in. This has been sent in by a customer because it won't connect to Wi-Fi. Whenever you try to scan for an available Wi-Fi network, it comes up with this error message. So the error code in particular is 2110-1118 and it basically just says that it can't pick up Wi-Fi. There's two reasons normally for this. The first reason would normally be because the antennas have become loose, but that's normally only the case when it's had a prior repair attempt. I have come across it a few times where it's happened just because of a drop or something like that, but the main cause for this is a bad Wi-Fi chip. Now, there's two problems with that. Number one, the Wi-Fi chip is a BGA chip, which means that you, you know, you're know you not going to be able to do it if you're just a average te or average uh, solderer you know if you're a hobby solderer who's never done bga work you need to be able to solder bga chips and uh, number two is that these wi-fi chips on these have custom firmware so you can't just take an off-the-shelf wi-fi chip it has to come off a nintendo switch donor board unless you've got a way to program it which none of us have as far as i know so that's the problem they have to be genuine I'm lucky enough to the point where I've got over a hundred donor boards. I buy them in bulk from a supplier of mine, and I normally fix them up and sell them. But when I can't sell them, I tend to basically, uh, you know, strip them down for parts and stuff, and take the donor chips off them. So I'm lucky enough that I've got plenty of donors where I can take one, reboard it, and put it onto this board. It's not an easy job, but it is doable. So with that being said, my name is Lakoda, I'm an electronics technician, I mainly work on games consoles but I do work on other stuff too. In fact, I've just recorded a video on this camera, so be sure to get subscribed if you want to watch that video as well. So with that being said, let's get into today's repair. Right after I tell you about today's sponsor. This video probably still would have been here without today's sponsor, but hey, it's time to show something, right? So here goes. Here at the Coda Productions, we love nothing more than to take as much money from you, the viewer, as we possibly can. Which is why we're proud to talk to you about ConsoleFix.shop. A great place for you to spend your hard-earned cash. I mean, yeah, fair enough. You get parts and supplies that help you fix things, but you've got to give me some money in return. Nothing in life's free, and if you pay me for it, you might appreciate it more. Or not. Hey, I'm not judging. With that being said, we do have some pretty cool stuff on the shelves, including power supplies, HDMI ports, charging chips, MOSFETs, and whatever else you can think of that will give you the illusion that you're getting a good deal. So head on over to the online store by clicking on the link in the video description, and if there's one thing I can guarantee, is that there will be a way for me to take your money. Console Fix, your friendly money-grabbing YouTuber. Okay, so like I said, we've got an error message. It says, wireless communication is not currently available due to an error. Please restart the console from power options in the power menu. Hold the power button for three seconds, blah, blah, blah. Obviously, I've already tried that, or rather I haven't. It's been doing it since I turned it on. And then when we look at the uh, when we look at the available Wi-Fi networks, nothing comes up. It does show up a MAC address, in, in, uh, interestingly. So, yeah, that's uh, a little bit strange how it's not actually showing up anything, but it's showing a MAC address. So... We're not going to bother plugging this into anything like the ammeter like we'd normally do with these because obviously it turns on. It's just the fact that it's not picking up Wi-Fi. So let's take it apart and have a look inside and see what's going on. Typically we get Wi-Fi issues on the HAD model boards. So there's several models to these. The HAD one being the last one before the Switch OLED and the Switch Lite came out. The Switch Lite uses the same CPU and stuff as the HAD board and so does the switch OLED as well so they're all the same parts they're all interchangeable etc etc but yeah I've got a feeling that it's going to be the Wi-Fi chip itself there's nothing been mentioned about prior repairs or anything when the customer sent this in and by the way if you do need to send in any repair or anything there'll be a link in the video description you can get in touch with me as well if you want to get a quote first. This job here, if I manage to fix it, I'll be charging £60, just in case you're curious. And, uh, yeah, I like to try and be transparent when it comes to these and try and tell people up front how much it's going to cost. So, for this, it would be £10 for the cost of the chip, and then it would be the... Uh, 
the labour, which would be £50, which is my standard hourly rate, or for the first hour anyway. So the flat rate for this would be £60, whether it takes me five minutes or whether it takes me two hours. It shouldn't take me more than an hour, so I charge for an hour. So like, I, like I've just said as well, I've just recorded a video on a camera that I've purchased on eBay. And I'm trying to mix things up a little bit, so let me know what you want to see repaired, and I will try my best. I know someone's recently asked me to try and fix a Sega Mega Drive. I will see what I can do. I did see that in the comments. I don't reply to every comment, but I do see all comments. I do read every single comment that people leave, so uh, I don't always get time to reply to them. Obviously, I'm very busy. I've got a family as well. So, yeah, sometimes I don't reply to them, but... I will obviously always uh, always read them, so I will see your messages. Okay, let's have a look then. So the antennas are not disconnected. That's probably not good. I was hoping it was going to be a nice easy fix, but no, evidently not. And this is indeed a HAD CPU01 board, so just like I expected. And there are different models of the... Wi-Fi chips as well, so you need to make sure that you're installing the correct one. I'll find that out in a minute when I actually go to, well, check on the Wi-Fi chip, which is underneath this NAND here. So you disconnect this, take that shield off, and then you can get to the Wi-Fi chip. Sometimes a reflow will work if it's down to something like drop or bend damage. This one is starting to flex in the middle here, which is a very common thing with these. So... There is a risk that this could end up as a blue screen of death before the day is over. Just taking it out of the housing sometimes could cause it to end up with damaged joints under the CPU if, you, if we've got bending issues. And unfortunately, that's a risk that we just have to take because, well, it's one of those things. These are known for bend issues, and if it ends up as a blue screen, then that's going to mean CPU reboot time, unfortunately. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drop my hot air down to 130 degrees Celsius. And I'm just going to try and soften the adhesive on this heatsink. I don't want to just tear the foam. I want to try and keep it as clean as I possibly can. It just makes for a better job and a better finish when you put the console back together. It's not going to make much of a difference in terms of cooling. These really don't require much cooling. In fact, for the most part, they end up pretty much passively cooling you know they don't end up with the fan spinning all of the time it doesn't take much to actually cool these things okay this is quite warm so if it does tear it tears you know there's not really a lot you can do but we'll try not to tear it no it's going to tear I'm trying no, nope. no, nope, it's torn. Well, there's nothing you can do. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. It is what it is. Never mind. I tried. So, one thing that I've seen quite a lot with these is, for example, there's, there's a few things that you have go wrong when it comes to the Wi-Fi chip. You can get a purple screen of death. Sorry, no, not a purple screen of death. That's an and. Uh, an orange screen of death on these with the Wi-Fi chip and what I tend to see people do and it really does annoy me is they'll sit there and they'll reflow the Wi-Fi chip while it's inside the housing and reflowing it is absolutely fine if it's down to for example a cracked solder joint because of the uh, you know because of the flex issues that we get on these consoles reflowing the chip is absolutely fine and I've done that multiple times and it's never come they've never come back it's the same with the cpu as well if you get a blue screen of death because of flex issues you know i've had cases where a reflow has worked and it's just well it's never come back basically because the issue is purely down to a cracked solder joint right now if we've got an issue where the chip is physically damaged then Obviously, you know, a reflow is not going to work. But one thing that really does annoy me with these when I see people working on them is they'll reflow it while it's in the housing. And that is a bad idea because these things are like butter and it really does not take a lot to melt them at all. So please 
don't do any work to these while they're inside the housing. Sometimes I'll change M92 while it's in the housing, but only ever on my own consoles. Let's see what game these were playing. Uh, Pokemon Violent. Nice. Very nice. Decent game. All right, first thing I always do to stop it making a mess on my desk is just clean off the thermal paste because that's going to get changed anyway. Even if we didn't get it working, I would still put fresh thermal paste on it. So I'll clean that off, and then while I'm at it as well, I'll also clean off the heat sink. Just because I'm already cleaning thermal paste off. That thermal paste is actually still quite wet, but if you've disturbed it, you've got to change it. You know, once it's started to dry, and it had started to dry on the CPU, so it's got to be changed no matter what. Okay, let's pop that off, and the shield will come with it. There we go. And let's have a look under the microscope. And this is a pro repair attempt, so this is going to invoke a repair attempt fee. Uh, I've got a little rule. I will work on no fix, no fee if there's no pro repair attempts. And this would invoke a £20 pro repair attempt fee if I can't get it working. If I can get it working, I don't charge any extra. But if I have to spend time fault finding and chasing issues that someone else has messed with, then I've got to get paid for my time. But this isn't going to be a case where a reflow is going to work. This is going to have to be replaced. So I'm going to just go ahead and remove this Wi-Fi IC. It looks like someone's either already reflowed this chip or they've replaced it with a non factory standard which is going to be unprogrammed and we've got the CY variant on that I'm going to wick this away now but the pads on these are very very fragile so you've got to be really careful not to lift any pads there is a tip as well by the way if you cut your wick on an angle it means that you can get into the corners easier So when you're cutting your wick to clean it, always cut it like that on an angle. Because then, when, like I said, when you go to wick away a BGA area, if, for example, you want to get into this top corner here, that's really easy. And you don't need to risk going so close to the components. Because you can heat up a little bit further away from the corner and it'll still wick it away, look. So just like that. And it should, there you go, it takes the corner as well, because the heat just transfers. And then I can just turn the board around. And the same for this corner. There we go. So, now that's done, I'm going to heat this area up again. And clean it all up. Get rid of all of this flux. There we go. And then if I just bring this chip in. So if we take a donor board here and just get a comparison of the positioning of the chip. We're actually out a little bit. So it needs to be right in the corner of this square. So the problem is there's no indicators here. And that should be about perfect there. And of course, it's a little bit out of focus, but never mind. Uh, I'm a terrible YouTuber. All right, so I'm at 440 degrees Celsius, and I'm going to go down to 10% airflow. I'm going to keep my airflow nice and low so as the chip don't slide all over the place. Okay, that's just sat down, so 
I'll go to 30% airflow now. Add some flux. Give it a nudge and we are done. I'm going to leave that to cool down. Get rid of that random solder ball there. But I'm going to leave that to cool down just for a couple of minutes just so as I can clean it up and then I will give it a test. So a little bit of IPA. And a good scrub. There we go. Let's just pop everything back inside the housing and I can give it a test. Okay, that is everything connected up. Nothing screwed down really yet, but whatever. Let's turn it on. Or maybe not. Oh. Okay, so I'm drawing 230 milliamps and nothing. That's from the bench supply. Let me just check on the computer, make sure it's not in RCM mode. No, it doesn't appear to be. So that could very well then be a dead Wi-Fi chip. I may as well. I may just have to do that again. Right. Okay. Well, I'm going to take a short break and then reboard another Wi-Fi chip. Then. Right. Okay. So I've just got back. It's been a couple of hours, and this is working. It's actually been an hour and well, according to this, an hour and thirty-nine minutes, because uh, that's how long it's been switched on. Don't know why it wasn't working, but yeah, I've just come back and it's turning on. So. Very weird, but let's have a look and see if it picks up Wi-Fi. No, it doesn't. That, chances are, is going to be a CPU error. Oh. Yeah, so, on this, when the uh, Wi-Fi chip... Well, from the Wi-Fi chip, it goes straight to the CPU, and I don't think that's something I'm going to be able to fix, to be honest. Uh, not without reboarding the CPU, and that's going to cost too much. Uh, chances are it's probably been caused by the bending issue we've got on it. Uh, the console itself is turning on, and obviously the console is working, but I don't know if there's anything I'm going to be able to do with this, so I'm going to have to speak to the customer about it. What I will do is I will call the customer tomorrow and just speak to him about it. And I mean, to be honest with you, if it come to it where I had to reboot the CPU, we might be better off with another board. But I'll leave some information on whether I'm going to do a second video on this or not. But for now, it's not really uh, it's not really looking good, is it? Uh, the fact that I've replaced it with a genuine Wi-Fi chip and it's not working. That's uh, telling me something, and unfortunately, I don't think there's going to be a lot more that I can do with it at the minute. So, it is what it is, I guess. That sucks. Yeah, okay. Well, unfortunately, it's going to be a no fix on this for now, so it is what it is. Um, we don't fix them all. Uh, I assumed it would be the Wi-Fi chip. It could be something to do with the big Max IC, maybe, but I don't have any at the minute. I've got them on donor boards, but they really are fragile and a pain to reball. So, yeah, <laughs> to be honest, it'd be easier taking the CPU and putting it on another board. Something I could try. That's an option. Um, you know, I might, might make a video on that if the customer agrees that it's okay to uh, to risk it for a biscuit sort of thing because it's not exactly a straightforward process. So, yeah, that's going to be it for now. Thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you do have any comments or questions, leave them down in the comment section down below. I'll always do my best to answer. If you do want to organise a repair, you can get in touch, consolefix.shop, and you can book it in on there as well. And also, if you do need parts and supplies, you can get them on the online store as well, consolefix.shop. So, thank you very much for watching. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you all in the next video.
Bye for now.